Hi YouTube, Thibaut Van Damme here with another YouTube video. And for those of you who are not familiar with my channel, I am a singer-songwriter based in Southeast London, and today I'm gonna to be talking about distribution, what it is, and why you need it. And I'll be honest, I have not planned out this video to like a T. Usually I write like a whole script and things that I can like sort of follow on my computer or whatever, just so that way I stay on topic, but I'm feeling like quite energized. I got quite a lot of like fucking energy to like finish some shit, so, um, I just want to get into this and I'll sort of start with like a little preface about like what my experience is with distribution, how long I've been doing it and when I was getting involved and the things that I was learning and everything else. So um, about a year and a half ago, I had worked on this EP. In fact, I'd worked on it even longer ago. But anyway, I worked on my debut EP 67, which is available and distributed on Spotify and everywhere if you want to listen to it. And so I was thinking about how to distribute it. I ne I'd never done that before. I'd had a SoundCloud account for a while and I'd also developed sort of uh, my band camp. And I guess the first thing I could say about distribution is I started asking myself, how do I get onto Spotify? It's like a pretty basic question. It's like, huh, like I listen to music on Spotify. So how do I get my music to be on Spotify? Cause I'm a musician and it's like a really basic sort of beginning point to start at and asking myself that question it led me to distribution and there are basically two ways to do this the first way to distribute is through a label so if you're signed to a label they'll do it for you or if you distribute yourself and that's become a lot easier now with the internet you can digitally distribute and there's also physical distribution so that's another thing i'll mention physical distribution was like way back in the day when there was sam goody they basically needed people to actually like get your CDs into those shops like Sam Goody or Tower Records or whatever. And that's the equivalent of what we have now, except it happens on the internet with all the different streaming platforms, which is kind of weird. I'd like to think that maybe one day we'll just have one streaming platform and we'll have everything. The encyclopedic Oxford English streaming service or whatever. But uh, until that point, there's a lot of other sort of stores and shops and stuff where you can listen to your music. And so online distribution will get you onto those shops. Um, and there's an important point to note about distribution in this way. Um, so I was doing a lot of uh, sort of exploring into different distributors and trying to find out as much information as I could to pick the right one. Because the, reality, the thing that I've learned actually about distribution and distribution companies is that they all have their own little deals. Like DistroKid is one of them and they have one deal, which is like a yearly plan. TuneCore is another, a lot of them, they do actually a per release sort of deal. You pay them X per release, you know, and I want to do a separate video actually talking and comparing about different distribution companies. And what I really want to talk about in this video, and I just want to stay as focused as I can, is I want to talk about why you need distribution. Because while I was doing my research, I came across this uh, channel called Pay Us No Mind. And I'll put a link in the description, not only to the channel, but also to the video that I'm going to be referring to. But in this video, they're talking about TuneCore, which is the distributor. And they're talking about uh, why TuneCore is the best financial decision. And I remember I basically was watching this video and I didn't agree with it. And so I wrote a few comments in the section below. And uh, basically, Pay Us No Mind got back to me. And I was really excited to basically see a response. And they basically explained that they didn't agree. They basically thought this, that, and the other. And the point that I found we were sort of coinciding on and this point of debate really came down to this idea about if you have a fan base, should you, uh, if you rather, sorry, if you don't have a fan base, should you be distributing your music? Should you be paying money? Because that's what it costs. It costs money. Should you be distributing your music if you don't have a fan base? And I remember basically coming from this perspective like, fuck yes, you should. It doesn't cost a lot of money. It's a privilege to be able to afford it, to be honest. So I need to acknowledge that at least. But the thing is, it's like, you know, it, almost always it costs like less. It's like 50 bucks or less, no matter who you go with to get your music onto Spotify and a plethora of other listening platforms. And the thing is, I thought about it and I was like, that is a big point of debate for me. And I remember Pay Us No Mind basically did not agree. They were basically saying, if you don't have a fan base, you shouldn't be distributing your music. You should be you should be distributing online, but only on free services like SoundCloud and Bandcamp. And I love Bandcamp. I love it because I can design my own personal kind of page. It looks really cool. It's a little less standardized. It's a little bit more DIY. And I fucking love it for that. And it has a huge appeal, especially it has a big place in the DIY punk scene and just DIY music generally. And so I really admire it for that. And you can upload your music to Bandcamp or SoundCloud for free and your music will be there. People can stream it right there on that website. And yeah, they'll listen to it. And one thing that I will say, and there's a big difference between free distribution 
paid distribution is that when you distribute your music for free with SoundCloud or Bandcamp, those are the two websites I know of, or also you could say YouTube too. When you distribute your music using these three platforms, you do not make money from these free platforms unless someone buys your album specifically on SoundCloud or maybe on, uh, or I meant Bandcamp, but maybe also on SoundCloud. But Bandcamp, you can sell your music and they have a nice feature that I really admire, which is name your own price. So Bandcamp is great. And I do encourage anyone that's watching this and has no idea about this to go check out Bandcamp because it's excellent. Um, but the thing about paid distribution is when you appear in streaming services like Spotify or Apple Music, they have a legal obligation to compensate you for the amount of times your music is streamed. So just when someone streams it right there on the platform, you are owed like a fraction of a cent for every stream if they listen beyond 30 seconds or whatever. And I know that that's not a lot of money, but I've thought a lot about my music and just having a career as a musician. And the thing is that royalties are one dimension of a larger career in music. I do a lot as a musician and you know, to be honest, it is challenging. It is challenging, but it's not as challenging when you realize that there are like a lot of different ways to be actually making money. And there's a handful of royalties, not just mechanical streaming royalties. There's also performance royalties. And there's also like sort of publishing administrative royalties, publishing royalties. I'll talk about all these things in other videos. It's really complicated. And I, when I first tried doing this video about a year ago, it's kind of a reaction video. And I just couldn't get through it all. It just took me way, way too long. And I realized I was taking on way too much. So what I want to do in this is just emphasize this point, which is that if you make music and even if you don't really even believe in yourself, um, but like if you believe in yourself a little bit, I think that you should invest in yourself as a musician and make your music available to the world on streaming platforms by paying for online distribution. There are different people that will do it for different amounts. In fact, there are free online distributors. I think there's a handful of them and I will put links in the description because I can't remember them off the top of my head. But there are some people that exist in this world that they will get your music onto Spotify and they will either do it for a commission or some other, or maybe even just completely for free, but it might not work as well. I don't fucking know. But um, yeah. I think it's important to be available on mainstream streaming services. And it comes down to this major point, or not a major point really, but this point that I recognize, which is that, ugh, God, fucking hair. Okay, this point that I realize, which is that um, on streaming services, if you are not available where people listen to music, then you cannot be listened to there. And it goes back to this other point, which is that if you are only on SoundCloud, the only people that will really listen to you and you have a chance of actually being heard by is actually people that already use SoundCloud. Because in my opinion, basically something unusual about SoundCloud and Bandcamp is because they offer free distribution, free online distribution, that you can be available on those websites for free. It has a huge appeal with the musician audience. If you are a musician and you want your music up online for free, then a lot of people end up using SoundCloud. I realize that almost everyone that I follow or follows me on SoundCloud, those people are all musicians. We're all just fucking musicians. We're all in the same fucking place. But the truth is that the audience of people that listen to music is much larger than the people that actually make music, even though there's a lot more musicians now than ever before. And so the thing is, the question really comes just down to the idea, how many people do you actually want to listen? How, you know, how big of an audience do you want to be available to? I would assume that if you were anything like me, you would say as many fucking people as possible. And so because of that, I think it's really important to work with a service that actually has a really large reach. Um, working with DistroKid, you end up in like over 150 stores and it includes like all the major ones and a lot of ones you've definitely not even heard of. So it's just like, in my mind, it makes a lot more sense to go with a distribution company, especially because I think about this in a very personal, practical sense. And maybe this is another good way to communicate it. When there wasn't COVID-19 and I was playing gigs at the open mic and things like that, whenever I played, even though I don't have a very strong fan base, I just remember that people would say, if people did like my music, they'd come up to me and say, oh my God, I love your set. Where can I hear your music? And they'd say almost always, are you on Spotify? And I'd always have to be like, ah, not yet, but I'm on SoundCloud. And they'd be like, oh, uh-huh. Well, like, I guess I'll go look you up there. And then, of course, it doesn't fucking help that my name is, like, complicated as shit to spell. You know, so the thing is, that actually, people were not going through the effort of actually looking me up and listening to my music, even though they str I struck a personal connection with my music. They, they like my music. They want to hear it more. 
But they just, it's just more effort. The thing is that they're like, oh, are you on this thing that I already use? And I have to say no. And I think that actually, this brings up another large point about being a musician, that when you're a musician, it's not, I know it's so easy to be egotistical as a musician because I am I am that basically. But something that I've really taken on board with uh, Damien Key's channel, something he was doing a few years ago, maybe I would, actually I'll say just a year ago, is he was making a lot of videos where he talks about how to be more successful as a musician. It has to do with actually offering a lot more value to your audience. What is the value that I offer to my audience? And I believe that idea fully. And when he said that, I was like, fuck, this man knows things. So I'll put a link in, in the description to his channel too. But actually, it's all about adding value. And if you are making music, you know, for yourself, that's great. And I love the music I make. But the thing is, how do I add value? Well, one of the things I can do to add value to the people that maybe want to listen to my music is make it more accessible. If it's easier for them to listen to me, I have that responsibility. That's my responsibility to make it easy for them to hear me. You know, the effort they will make is by actively listening and emotionally investing with in my music and connecting with me. That's their job. That's like what they're doing. And I'm trying to get them to say, I'll take that responsibility on. And so what I'm really trying to do is I'm actually just trying to make it as easy as possible for them to do that. If I could, I would just bring a stereo around with me and just play people my music. In fact, I've thought a lot about biking around with my speaker and just playing my album, being like, hey, everybody, listen to my album. <laughs> but like, I think that's a little bit extreme. Although I do like my album. I like listening to it, especially in that way, because it gives me a new insight into the mix and stuff. Anyway, but all that stuff aside, make it easy, you know? And if you distribute, not only do you make it easier... There's a, a slew of reasons, actually. I'm going to just list off right now. When you distribute with uh, a paid aggregator, like DistroKid or whatever, not only does it make it more accessible, easier for people to listen to your music, but it actually, because it's a paid service, you actually get streaming royalties that your distributor will pay you. So you actually make money from this, even though it may not be a lot at first. It will be the thing that you will end up needing to do if you ever make any money from music at all. Because that that's it. It's royalties, you know? Like it's, I mean, it's one dimension of it. But if you are not signed up to an aggregator, you will not, not only will you not develop your fan base, but you won't be getting these royalties that you need. And also, uh, it's a validation of yourself as a professional musician. My name now is on a, a playlist that I made with some of my music and also music of like Neil Young and like Frank Sinatra and like people that I fucking love and admire and that the world loves and admires and are hugely influential in music. And I know that there's a billion Spotify playlists out there. And I know that people may not listen to mine, but the thing is, if they do, they will see my name and it will be next to these other people and it will be in the same font, in the same everything. I'm not saying that I'm these people, but I am saying that at least I level the playing field. At least I'm on the same platform as them, literally. And I think that if you take your music seriously, even a little bit, that you owe yourself that. And you owe yourself all those other things because it's a professional development. I believe this same idea also about making my own website, but I have yet to do that. And anyway, this was an important point for me to bring up because I remember about a year ago or so when I was distributing my EP 67, I remember I found this video and I got in a little debate and I remember thinking like, this is not helpful. And the only thing I could think of, the reason why you wouldn't want to distribute your music I mean, there's the DIY punk affiliations with Bandcamp, which is great, and I love that. But, you know, the only other thing I can think of is if you truly just cannot afford it. And, like, it is, I mean, it is a privilege to do music. It's, like, one of the greatest privileges. It's an incredible gift that I have to be able to work on music regularly every day. It's a lot of work. I love it. <laughs> and I wouldn't do anything else, really, in my mind. If I can avoid doing anything else, I'm happy to do do anything I can with music, if I, if I can, yeah. Um... But it is a privilege and to be able to afford distribution. I mean, I pay in a nutshell $35 a year and full disclosure, I work with DistroKid and that that's who my distributor is. And I like working with them. And like I said, I'll do another video where I talk about other distributors and other options and why I chose them and everything else. But um, I will say that there was another distributor. I think about them all the time and I'll talk about them in that other video. But, um, you know, it is money. It's money. And if you can't afford that, then maybe, yeah, maybe stick with free distribution for now. But I just know it's miles apart. It's like, I have people that follow me on, I mean, I only had one follower for a year when my EP was out. I distributed my album. Now I have 14 followers on Spotify. I know it's a small number and you're probably saying, what the fuck is this person doing? Telling me what I should be doing. But the thing is, like, I'm someone that's just developing my career. And the thing is, it starts there. And yes, theoretically, I could get less followers, but... I'm going to be releasing an EP in about three or four months anyway. 
and I'm sure that I'll get maybe even more followers and then just slowly but surely. And the thing is, the thing about more is more begats more. You get more people and then those people, it's like it's fucking more people. That's how people work. <laughs> so um, you got to start somewhere. And I think that distributing your music online is a great place. Anyway, that's sort of my rant. That's sort of my video talking about this thing. I wanted to do this for a while, so I'm so glad that I did it. I'm glad I didn't do it to a script because I think it would have been just a little too neurotic even for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. Like I said, I will be making more videos talking about distribution, publishing royalties, and all these other things that are really important to developing a career in, as a musician. I also just want to say as a final like uh, sort of a disclaimer, I am a musician. I am developing. If you have any feedback, if you have any sort of anything about your opinion, share your opinion, please. Tell me what your experiences are in the comments below because I'm always looking to develop and learn more. And, you know, how do you do that if not by communicating with others? So, yeah, like, subscribe, that whole thing. I'll be making a video sometime soon. Ciao for now.